What's going on, YouTube? Uh, we just got back from our trip to Sedona where we had an issue with our furnace. Um, it worked good for the first couple nights there. Last night there, it would come on for 15 to 20 seconds and then cut out and we, we couldn't get any heat. Uh, the igniter wasn't igniting or anything like that. So I started doing some diagnosing while we were out there uh, and kind of got it figured out. So there's a couple things that could be wrong. Um, first, you got to pull off your cover. All you got to do is pull the four bolts or screws out of each corner. You do not have to take that out. Don't make the same mistake I did. I pulled that out originally thinking it had to come off before I could pull the rest off. You don't. Just the four and then that pops right off and exposes your blower um, and majority of your furnace. So we have a Suburban SF30Q. Here's our model number right here. Um, and right there in big letters. There's a wiring diagram up here. Uh, Suburban used to have their sail switch um, mounted outside right here, which detects the blower being on. It's one of the trigger points for the furnace coming on. The other one is the limit switch. Um, so I started with the sail switch. A lot of people said that was a big problem because it can get contaminated with dirt or hair, um, dust, whatever. So on the old ones, like I said, it was mounted out here. You could pull it right out, no problems. Um, this is now on the inside. You can see the two screws that hold it in here. So this wire and this wire are actually mounted up to it. Um, I went ahead and pulled both wires out. There's four screws that hold the blower cover on, and then you have to remove two more screws down here. This plate has to come off, otherwise you won't be able to pull the cover off. Um, on the cover itself, you got a screw down here. There's one up there, one up there. Take the three out of this cover here, pull that off. And then once you have all that off, pull, pick the wiring up and the cover comes off and you can expose your sail switch. So this switch right here is what tells the processor that your blower motor is spinning. Um, again, it can get con contaminated up in this area with whatever and everything and not be able to go up and trigger the signal that your blower motor is on. So I pulled it off, there's nothing on it. I hooked the wires up to it, held it up, um, tried to turn it on to see if maybe it just wasn't going up far enough or something. It did not work. So I eliminated that as being the cause of it and I went on to the next thing, which is the limit switch for the uh, temperature. Um, it's actually located inside the trailer. And so I'll go in there and I'll show you where that's at. Um, and that actually was what was wrong with ours. Our limit switch just went out on us. Um, so we were able to get one on our way back into town. <coughs> and I was able to get it fixed now. So um, when you do this, and ours, our panel's right here, pull the panel off. And it exposes the inside of the furnace. Um, there's a screw here. For the vent and there's a screw back over here for the vent this is normally up like that that screw you can't get out with this in the way that's why i left it out um if you look at the back side of it it just twists off so i took a screwdriver up uh, around here and i twisted it down and it popped off um i was able to get that other screw out and then i managed to just wiggle this out and that's what it looks like on the back side. You've got the lip, and then you got this one here. Um, but you pull that off, and it exposes your limit switch right here. And this takes the temperature inside of here. Once it gets up to a certain temperature, it cuts the circuit out, so you can't continue to run the heater and overheat something, melt something, something like that. Uh, you got two wires. One goes to each side. That one and that one. Um, basically, what I did to test this is I took a piece of extra wire that I had laying around and I jumped it. Um, heater turned on, 
it ignited, started blowing hot air, and I was able to warm the trailer up a little bit using that. It's not a good idea because there's no safety switch in there to turn it off if it gets too hot. So keep that in mind. Um, the correct way to, to test it would be uh, check continuity across the two prongs on it and see if it's open or closed. If it's open, then it's bad. If it's closed, then it's good. Um, it should only open at a certain temperature, which is actually stamped on the back side of it. So ours is 160 degree uh, opening. So it was like... 50 degrees when we we're out there there's no reason why it should have been open um so we replaced that everything seems to be working fine now i uh, just got to button everything back up put everything back together and we'll be good to go for the next round i appreciate you guys watching if you have any questions or anything like that let me know